All praises and glory is due to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem Rakar Kodash, Shalom to the Lord's elect, the brothers and sisters of the household of faith. And once again, it's another video. Hopefully you find this video edifying as well as exhorting. So I'm going to be reacting to this video here put up by uh, Elder Apostle Taha entitled The Most High Did Not Set Us Up to Engage in Endless Debates. And um, his channel is G GMS Declaring the End. Now I'm going to see as far, um, you know, how the spirit take me, uh, how far it takes me into this video. But without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Shem Rukhak Kodash, Shalom to the 144,000 and the rest of the elect out there. Shalom to you all. Anyway, I'm going to entitle this video. <clears throat> The Most High didn't send us, or set us up, rather. The Most High didn't set us up to have endless debates. Yeah, these uh, endless debates, there's another word for it. They're superfluous activity. The word superfluous means um, unnecessary. And the Apostle Paul, he spoke about superfluity of naughtiness. Okay, things that are brought into the ministry that that is unnecessary that uh, things that the Heavenly Father didn't instruct us to do okay and and one of them is these endless debates you don't need to have an endless debate because a member of the elect and we're only out there for the elect okay Romans 11 and 7 there's many scriptures that that talk about the elect they, they also go into many names Church of the firstborn Church of the first fruits you know, the most highest prized possession, et cetera, et cetera. So we're only out there for the elect. Now, the scriptures tell us the elect will be of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. So you don't need endless debates. So what does that make these endless debates? Superfluous activity. So why are so many Israelites drawn into it? Because as we know, many of these Israelites are into this thing for entertainment. And that's Ezekiel 33 and 30, okay? They look at this as, a, as another form of entertainment, this ministry, okay? And that's why they're so drawn to these debates, these superfluous debates, okay? Uh, Isaiah 11, let me just prove to you, here it is right here, Isaiah 11 and 2. Now, this first, this prophecy here by the prophet Isaiah first starts with Yahweh Shai, but remember, the elect, they are joined to Yahweh Shai, as a matter of fact, when Yahweh Shai comes, who's he going to gather out of the nation of Israel? Well, your answer is Matthew 24 and 30. He's going to gather his elect. Clearly, the scriptures say that. So here's one quality of the elect. They're very, it, it, they're very quick to understand. It don't take them long to get it. Okay? So if a guy, if you have to wrestle back and forth with a guy in some endless, fruitless debate, then it's not meant for him to get it. He's the unworthy. I come to realize there's two classes in this Israelite thing of ours. The worthy and the unworthy. The worthy are the elect. The unworthy are the non-elect. No matter how much you wrestle with them, you twist their leg backwards, you forwards, <laughs> you know, you try to get them in a headlock, they're, they're just not going to get it because they're the unworthy. All right? They're not the worthy, they're the unworthy. Okay, so Isaiah 11 and 2, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and, and understanding. That's for the elect. The worthy, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of the the spirit of knowledge and of and of the fear of the Lord. Right, they, they all these qualities, the worthy, the elect, they have them. Okay, in abundance. Okay, and shall make him. Here's the point, and shall make him of quick, quick. The key word there is quick, quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. So you don't need to wrestle back and forth with a guy like that. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Again, beginning with Yahweh Shai, that's how he taught. He didn't teach according to his own feelings and his own words. Every judgment that Yahweh Shai made, every teaching that he taught was um, from his father, Yahweh. And he always made reference to his father, Yahweh. Constantly, Yahweh Shai constantly made references to his father, Yahweh. Even when he did a miracle, he used the spiritual power. He would say, my father gave me this power. All right? I didn't do this by myself. My father gave me the power to do it. And he was talking about his father, 
Yahweh. Okay. So uh, let's go back to the video. To have endless debates or to engage in endless debates. So I was watching you know, last night, uh, Vocab Malone had this Jake on there, which knew the scriptures and went into, you know, the uh, root words of the scriptures, whether they use a blue letter, concordance, strong concordance, or whatever. And um, he had, there was a, a video with this Jake having a debate with uh, a deacon in a car and they're reviewing it him in uh, vocab and then they you know they say well if you go to this hebrew word and you that greek word and this really means this it's a complete waste of time what what vocab malone is doing since i put it put it out there that uh if vocab rolls up on you just call the cops on him so now he's him and abu is begging it was a, this is a month what is it, a month ago or so there's a video of uh, Abu and uh, Vocab begging Apostle Ramlob, you know, you know, why can't we dialogue with you guys? Yep, yep. Because, yep. um, <laughs> hey, I guess he... And the answer to that is we, we don't want to dialogue with you guys because it's a waste of time. Again, it's superfluous activity. The Apostle Paul warned us about superfluity of naughtiness. And that would be an example. Okay, we don't have time to to uh, engage in fruitless debates. Okay, we're only out there for the elect. And once the elect is sealed, the scriptures tell us once the elect is sealed, all hell is going to break loose. And Elder Pastor, what, a year or two ago, said he believes that the elect is, is sealed. Well, the, the elect is very, very close to being sealed. Okay, very, very close. It's just like during the days of Noah... All right, Noah was the elect of his day. Noah, his wife, uh, his sons and their wives, a total of eight people. Now, once they entered into that ark, and the Lord, as the scripture have said in the book of Genesis, the Lord shut the door, the Lord being the uh, Yahweh, the heavenly father Yahweh, once he shut the door, all hell broke loose, man. Okay, all hell broke loose. So, again, Yahweh Shai gave a clue. He said, as in the days of Noah, were so shall the coming of the son of man be so that's a major clue all right everybody else that was not able to enter into the ark they all perished they all died they drowned to death they were the unworthy they were not the worthy the worthy was noah his wife his sons and their wives a total of eight people they were the worthy and everybody else perished so it's the same thing that's going to happen now the only difference is there's going to be a lot more people being delivered, being saved, than there was during the days of Noah. But it's just, it's uh, you can use the the event that happened with Noah. You can use that as an explanation because it's very similar. Okay, and that's what Yahweh Shai did. He he gave a clue. He said, "As in the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be." And we're in the time of the coming of the Son of Man, which is Yahweh Shai. When I say what I said, I said this is fine. I'll call the cops on this guy. Because it's, it, 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 it doesn't go, no, go anywhere. Yeah, it's fruitless. <clears throat> like somehow. Uh, John the Baptist said, what is that, Matthew 3 and 8? Let's go to, let's uh, recant what John the Baptist said, Matthew 3 and 8. We get, we're coming in the spirit of John the Baptist, man. Begin to fell the pastor on down, we're coming in that spirit. John the Baptist said this. I'll start the seventh verse. But when he saw that he is John the that he is John the Baptist, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees, which not all of them were wicked, the majority of them were, but not all the Pharisees were wicked. Okay, you have there's a scripture where it says it speaks about the sect of the Pharisees that believed. Okay, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. There you go. Bring forth, and the wrath is coming, all right? <laughs> the great wrath is coming. The day of the Lord, Zephaniah spoke about it. The great day of the Lord is near, all right? 
uh, Matthew 3 and 8. Here's the point. Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. So, so uh, what's his face? Uh, Abu and uh, what's the other guy? Uh, vocab. They're not fruits, meat for repentance. So it would be a waste of time engaging in a back and forth dialogue with them, trying to convince them to see what we see. They don't have the vision because they're the unworthy. Okay, and we believe both of them are heathens anyway. Okay, so there you go, man. Ain't gonna waste time with them. We only out there for, like Yahweh Shai said, Matthew 15 and 24, I am sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's who we're sent to. The Lord told Ezekiel to go and learn, eat this roll, which is the, the knowledge, the truth, and go and speak unto the children of thy people, which are the Israelites. What nationality was Ezekiel? The prophet Ezekiel, he was an Israelite. So there you go, man. Let's go. Now, Vocab Malone is going to hit the right script and all of a sudden we're going to see the light and we're going to be become Christians. We're going to become, uh, you know, Protestants. That ain't going to happen. We're going to say we're not Israelites, you know, because we had a bunch of back and forth. You got you to gotta understand, with Abu, it's, it, was, uh, the, it was sometime at the end of 2000. Seven going into 2008, where we, when we first encountered Abu with his uh, truth after knowledge, and we were going back and forth with this guy. So we're talking 2007 going into 2008, and then all of a sudden, uh, vocab pops on pops up on the scene, and um, we realized that uh, or find out that uh, Abu. And um, Abu and uh, uh, Vocab worked together. Uh, even uh, Abu or Abu Kumar it came to the camp on 34th and 7th. And didn't, you know, he was going at us back and forth with the scriptures, but didn't remember to tell us, oh, by the way, I'm the guy from Truth After Knowledge, which, which means he rolled up like a snake. Which means he has no integrity. Well, right there, that's... That's a, a major red flag right there. He's not honest. He's not sincere. Okay. Wearing a black T-shirt with a, a Santa de Santa de Guadalupe. You know the scripture speaks about guys who come up to spy out our liberty. Let me see if I can find that. <clears throat> and we have liberty in this thing, this thing of ours. Like I like to say. That's in, uh, hey, here we go. Galatians 2 and 4. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came, now here's the part, who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Yahweh Shai, that they might bring us into bondage. See? And that's why Abu was doing what he was doing. Okay? That's why he was doing what he was doing try to bring us back into bondage which the, the nonsense that they believe in is bondage the nonsense that vocab did the same thing vocab did the same thing that abu did he, abu came to the camp on 34th and 7th and he didn't he didn't identify himself he came in like a snake the same way vocab came in when he came to our camp he was he, he came he didn't he didn't let us know he was going to come to the camp he, he just uh, something called ambush journalism, <laughs> right? That was like an uh, uh, an example of ambush journalism. <laughs> the way he came, he ambushed us, man. He ambushed us. He, him and his entourage, which many of them they don't even they don't even uh, work with vocab in in uh, anymore. Many of them left vocab, including that that. Bruce Lee fanatics time she won. He even called Vocab a, a, a coward. Okay? So there you go, man. Back to the video. Santa de Guadalupe, which is Mary, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But in Mexico, they call it Santa de Guadalupe. I've been in Mexico. Yeah, he had that idol on his T-shirt, Abu, when he came up to the camp. All right. That's Santa de Guadalupe is heavy down there. That's that Queen of Heaven spirit. Right. But she's supposed to be Mary. 
Anyway, um, so I said, look, this is going nowhere. If he, if Vocab Malone really believes he's going to come to one of the major camps and make them see the light, he's got to be out of his goddamn mind. It's cotton picking mind. Yeah. So here you got a, you got a, a Captain Tazariak. You know he like he like he loves to debate. And um, and here you got uh, Deacon Hakar and, and Deacon and brothers Hassad. They like that they go on a debate. They challenge everybody. Most I didn't say go and find anybody that you know does not going to accept this truth and just debate with them. Nope, we didn't say that. Let me bring in the scripture. And those two guys are novices, especially Brother Hassad. They're both novices. But now, and see, this is why it is written, knowledge puffeth up. Knowledge puffeth up. Okay? We're not supposed to be puffed up in this thing of ours, man. Scripture say, the greater thou art, the more humble thyself. Humble yourself. Like Elder Pastor just said, and I'm bringing the scripture to back him up on that. Okay, it says this. The, the, uh, oh, now, this, this was uh, Apostle Paul giving uh, uh, Timothy his understudy, uh, giving him um, a command, okay? Some instruction, right? Second Timothy 2 and 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Yahweh Shai, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. So when we teach this knowledge is truth, we're supposed to commit it unto faithful men. That's our goal. Not trying to find anybody to debate just to vainly puff, puff ourselves up. It's a thing of vanity. Oh, look, so in the world, oh, look how much I know. This knowledge, this truth is not about that. As a matter of fact, later in the video, Apostle Tars speaks about the basics. We're really supposed to be teaching the basics. And that's true, because when you think about it, the nation of Israel, they're not, the, the majority of Israelites out there are not too bright. The Lord said his people are sottish children. Sottish means stupid. Th that's why they're called the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Sheep are not too, look at the nature of a sheep. They're not too bright. That's why sheep need a shepherd. Sheep are easily gullible. Okay? So these are the people that we're sent to. We're not sent to brainiacs, man. We're not sent to, to Harvard and Yale graduates. We sent many of these Israelites barely got out of high school. I myself, I dropped out of high school, man. Not that college or anything means it's all bullshit anyway. The, the, the school system, the best it can teach you is how to read, write, and count. And then you can function in life. If you know how to read, write, and count. Okay? J.P. Morgan is, is said he, he only had a third grade education. And look where he rose to. Okay, so going back to the scripture, 2 Timothy 2 and 2, and the things that thou has heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. That's what it's all about. Not trying to grab you and you, you, I'll debate you and I'll debate you. Yes. And again, debates are, are superfluous. You don't need to debate because the members of the elect, it won't take them long to get this knowledge, this truth, and to lock it down and to understand it. Okay? Let's get back to the video. And just debate with him. The apostle, the, what did they, well, let me, matter of fact, let me go to that. Now, you got these Christians, you know, before they come up with the description, that scripture, now they're going into the concordance, um, I would think they were going into the blue letter. But now they're going into these words. If you look this word up, it's from the Greek, and it means this, and it's talking about all nations. But the Apostle Paul, what did uh, Peter say concerning the Apostle Paul? 
that in not too many words in, in, in Acts 10, I believe it's a 28 verse, if I'm not mistaken, um, he says in not too many words that I'm not supposed to, as a matter of fact, I'll get that too so I can read it the right way. So what did I say I was going to do? Another scripture comes to mind is uh, the prophecy in Isaiah 8 and 16 just came to my mind. Bind up the testimony. What's the testimony? This knowledge is truth, right? Isaiah 8 and 16. Bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. That's the job. That's, that's what we're supposed to do. Let's read that in NLT. So Deacon Akar and, and Brother Hassad, they're doing their own thing. They're not following, they're not following the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Shabbat Shai. And, and them two, I call them Heckle and Jekyll. Them two, they're unworthy, man. They're not, they're not, they're, as you're gonna hear later in the video, uh, Deacon, um, Deacon Akar says, yeah, we'll debate you, but you can't use the writings of Apostle Paul. Whoa, what, <laughs> what kind of nonsense is that? The Apostle Paul wrote most of the New Testament. And for that matter, if you feel that way, then you can't use the writings of, uh, they can't use the, the, those who debate you, they can't use the writings of uh, Peter either. Because Peter, the Apostle Peter endorsed the Apostle Paul. The reference is in 2 Peter 3 and 16. So, uh, like Elder Pastor said in the video that I'm reacting to, them two, Heckle and Jekyll, they were set up to, I don't know which one is Heckle or Jekyll. All right, if you if you old school like me, you you remember you'll remember the cartoon Heckle and Jekyll. Hey, chum, <laughs> I say, you know what? Heckle and Jekyll was a bounce off from uh, 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 Laurel and Hardy, Stan Laurel and Olivia Hardy. Okay, again, if you're old school, you remember Laurel and Hardy. That's the Heckle and Jekyll was a bounce off from Laurel and Hardy. Absolutely. Okay. Isaiah 8 and 16 in the NLT, preserve the teaching of the Heavenly Father, right? And trust his instructions to those who follow me. That's that's what we're supposed to be doing. Okay? But again, you got guys who got their own, they got their own um, program. They're not following the, the the Holy Spirit's not working with them. So they're not following the program of Yahweh Shem Yahshai. They're not being guided through the Holy Spirit. Because remember, we're guided in this thing of ours through the Holy Spirit. They're not being guided the right way because they're the unworthy. And, and uh, you know, it's only a matter of time till the Heavenly Father used them as an example of how not to be when the Heavenly Father destroys them. You see? So let's get back to the video. So what did I say I was going to do? Oh, yeah. That's called a distraction. And it's really entertainment when you we're going to have a debate between this guy and that guy. And this is the topic. Scripture for that is Ezekiel 33 and 30. Come and let us hear what, what is the word of the Lord. And they come to thee as my people, but they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For thou art unto them as a very lovely song. And, they, and, them, and them dudes ain't even singing the song correctly. Talking about if you're going to debate me. You can't use the writings of Apostle Paul. That means you ain't singing the song correctly. Most of the song consists of the writings of the Apostle Paul. What are you talking about, man? But see, he got his own, they got it, uh, Deacon Akar and brothers, they got their own. They were brought into this truth for that very purpose. Matter of fact, hold up. Ungodly men, they were brought into truth. Yes, the Heavenly Father brought them into truth for the purpose of confusion. All right? Of... <laughs> For the purpose of how not to be, examples of how not to be, and what happens to you when you don't follow the instruction of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. That's why that's why they were brought in. And Jude speaks about guys like that. Jude, the first chapter. <clears throat> the fourth verse. For there are certain men crept in unawares. There you go. Who were before of old, even before the earth was created. Think about it. The Lord chose his elect. The Bible tells us the Lord chose his elect even before the earth was created. Right? So guess what? He chose the non-elect even before the earth was created. This this is the Heavenly Father's movie. This is his show. He's running the show. He's the ultimate director. 
So he's going to choose the actors that he wants, the righteous actors and the wicked actors. He's, he's in charge of the movie. He's the ultimate director. Okay? And you come to realize that in this, in this, in this truth, in this knowledge. Okay? Jude 1 and 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. See? To this condemnation. Ungodly men. Right. Turning the grace of our power into lasciviousness. Right. And again, the main thing with these two heckle and jekyll is all about the money. Their main motivation is, is, is the skrilla, money. Okay, that's why you go to their website. They, there they are selling everything that ain't nailed down. They're selling hats, t-shirts. Even though Apostle Paul said you're not supposed to wear a hat when you prophesy, when you teach. But that, that, that don't mean nothing to them. They're the unworthy. They were ordained as, as Jude is talking. These are the guys Jude is talking about. Jude is talking about. And this Jude by, here, by the way, was Yahweh Shai's biological brother. Okay, I wanted to look up that word lasciviousness. Um, you know what? Let me just keep moving on. Uh, into lasciviousness. Somebody can put the definition of that word in the, in the comment section. I would appreciate it. Turning the grace of our power into lasciviousness, because you brothers, you got to do some work too. And denying the only Lord power, and our Lord Yahweh Shai. Right, exactly. Exactly. So there you go, man. So this is why, this is Yahweh Shai said to watch as well as pray. These are one of the things that we're watching for. These, these false brethren, unawares brought in. The unworthy. Yes, the unworthy is among us, man. It's only a matter of time till they be sifted out. Every day the Heavenly Father is sifting out his people. Amos 9 and 9 will sift the house of Israel. Okay, so let's get back to the video. The topic. Does, does the most high, did, the, did you have a shy wear sandals or boots? And you'll have a five hour thing on. You know, well, he couldn't walk. He, had, he walked through sand and rocks, and if you wear sandals, you get cut your feet. So he did it. Yes, they did have boots. The Romans had boots, and <laughs> your house shy stole a pair of boots from this Roman guy. You know? <laughs> hey, this guy, Dick in the car, is, is, which, leads me to, to, which leads me to believe that Dick in the car and Hassad are not meant to further proves because they're not even coming... They're not coming like the way the way Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai wants them to come. Exactly. They're doing their own thing. And uh, the, shout out to the brother Mawatazak, the head of GMS Los Angeles. He pegged Deacon in the car from the start. He gave a testimony when he first met him. He said, he said this dude's a nigger. A niggard. Okay? He couldn't take off that hat even if he wanted to, man. Lord got him in there as as a as a uh, as a as you know as an example of how not to be. Again, Jude crept in unawares, ordained to this condemnation, and remember those now. That's something if the heavenly Father bring you into truth, just to destroy you. That means he really hates you, man, because they that know shall be beaten with many stripes. <laughs> it's better you never came into this beaten with many stripes see these guys they think this thing of ours is a joke i'm here to tell you man i've been in this thing for many years i'm telling you this is not a joke far from it this is deadly serious many people and even the pastor says this in, in the video i'm reacting to many people that were not right went insane trying to mess with this this knowledge this truth man and they were the unworthy they they their judgment was to go insane man okay their mental health suffered for it. Luke 12, because they were the unworthy. Luke 12 and, uh, and 47. And that servant which knew his Lord's will, see, and prepared not himself, because they're not doing the Lord's will. They're not doing Hakar and Hassad. They're not doing Yahweh Shem Shai's will. They're doing their own thing. They like that song, we got our own thing, we got it. What was that, CJ something? I forgot the rest of the name of the group. All right, they got their own thing. They're doing their own thing. Uh, Luke 12 and 47, and that servant which knew his Lord's will, but they know, 
and prepared not himself because they're doing their own thing, neither did according to his will, uh, this debate, that de that's not according to the will of Yahweh Bashib What's going to happen to him? Shall be beaten with many stripes. You see that? Now let's read that in the NLT. Yahweh Bashib is going to whoop your ass. I'll whoop your head, boy. You know I will. <laughs> Yahweh Bashib is going whoop your head, boy. You know he will. And a servant who knows what the master wants, see, but isn't prepared or doesn't carry out those instructions will be severely punished. Now, who's saying this? Yahweh Shai. These words are written in red, man. Yahweh Shai is saying this. There's another scripture I wanted to, um, damn, man, it was in my mind, too. It just went out. Wow. Oh. Uh, what is that? Hebrews. Is that Hebrews? 12, is it? Once. Once enlightened. Let's see. Enlightened. L I G. Uh, Hebrews 6 and 4. Let's go there. Hebrews 6 and 4, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit. This proves that the Holy Spirit is the engine. Like I always say, the Holy Spirit is the engine of this thing of ours. You ain't going nowhere without the Holy Spirit. At least you ain't going the right path without the Holy Spirit. And it's a narrow path. Remember, only one man can tread that path at a time. Hebrews 6 and 5 and have tasted the good word of the Heavenly Father and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of the Most High afresh and put him to an open shame. See? That's really what they're doing. They're mocking Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. And remember what it says in Galatians, the Most High is not mocked. Mark. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Let's get back to the video. Just, just teach, that's all. Just teach. If somebody right. comes up and it turns into a debate, you deal with him. But you're and, not... And, 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 and yeah, you deal with him and you're not going to wrestle back and forth. It'd be a good technique to apply the three strikes you out rule. I'm going to give this guy three chances. If he can't get it, then it's time for him to move on. Especially now, now that we're close to the end. Because, look, the Bible tells us that the elect will, will be blessed with wisdom, counsel, might, the spirit of understanding. They'll be quick in the fear of the Lord. So, you wrestling back and forth with a guy, that, that's a major red flag. He's not of the elect. It's not for him. He's the unworthy. And you can't go against the wishes of Yahweh Bashim Shai. The wishes of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Is not is for that guy not to get it, not to get the understanding. You can't fight against Yahweh Barshim Yahushai. You have to yield. You have to concede. You tell the guy, look, man, this is obviously not for you. Okay. Well, why would you say it's not? It's not for you. You're not getting the understanding. Me and you are not on the same page. So you know you you can walk on down the street. Okay. It's not for you. If it was. Look, John the Baptist said this. Let's go to, what is that? Matthew 3 and 27, or is it John 3 and 27? Let me see. I don't think it's Matthew 3 and 20. Nope. So it has to be John 3 and 27. This is what John the Baptist said. All right, John 3 and 27. John answered, John the Baptist that is, and said, a man can receive nothing, meaning understanding, the ability to comprehend, et cetera, et cetera, in this ministry, right? A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. There you go. There you go. So if, if he ain't getting it, then obviously Yahweh Shemiashah is not giving it to him. Okay? He's just not getting it. Let's get back to the video. But you're not, you're not going to have countless debates exactly. for... Uh... Shit, almost 20 years with our boo. It's almost, we're almost 20 years going back and forth. Yeah. Okay, so give me a second here. Let me go. I believe it. I know it's 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. Let's 
So, so far we're seven minutes in this video. And like I said, I'm going to go as far as the Spirit will take me in this video. Hopefully you're getting edified. And what I might do is do, do this video in parts because Pastor made a lot of good points in this video, man. So I'm probably going to end up doing the whole video. So I'll just break it up in parts. I'll time stamp, time stamp where I stopped and then continue with the next video, continue with part two, part three, etc. Until I go through the whole video. Another thing too, um, I got to get ready for camp. So I'll probably go another, eh, go to maybe another uh, 15 minutes or so. And uh, wrap this video up. That'll that'll be part one. Look at that! Look at the subhead in there, man. I immediately noticed that prophecy, a superior gift. Now you honestly think that which it is a superior gift, the gift of prophecy, the ability to prophesy, understand prophecy, read it, and explain it. You honestly think that gift is given to anybody or everybody? <laughs> that, gift, that gift is given to the worthy, not the unworthy. The unworthy will be given the gift of false prophecy so the Heavenly Father can turn around and destroy them. That's in Ezekiel, the 14th chapter, the 9th verse. The Heavenly Father created the false prophets and the Heavenly Father created the true prophets. You see? The, the false prophets, they, they got the gift of destruction. <laughs> the, the true prophets, they got the gift of, of salvation. All right? Everyone gets a gift. It depends on what kind of gift you get. Let me see, see if I can fast forward it. In the Greek, and um, IUIC, I urge you to start going into the blue letter and um, either going in the blue letter or the Strongs because you're going to have encounters with Christians, certain Christian schooled Christians that, was, that, were, that were trained in a, whatever theological seminary, I call it cemetery, and IUIC, they're, they're set up as a major stumbling block. <clears throat> one, one of the clues is the fact that they're the most popular Israelite group out there. And it's not about that in this ministry. Okay, it's not about the popularity. All right. The path of truth is so narrow, only one man can tread it at a time. So it's not a popular thing. The, the path of lies is a popular thing, but the path of truth is not a popular thing. So if you're spiritual... And, we, we, you know, there are more carnal men in this thing of ours than spiritual men. If you're spiritual, if you look at the IUIC spiritually, they're set up as a major stumbling block. Okay? That's why they're in bed with, with uh, individuals of the world. They're in bed with the NOI. They're in bed with the, uh, uh, you know, um, according to their website, they're, 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 their chart is underneath the Islam uh, at least it used to be years ago, all right, one of the Islam groups, okay, and they, supposedly they removed it from their website, but they're a major stumbling block, man, all you have to do is look at that group spiritually, okay, and those, they are the wicked Pharisees and Sadducees coming back in the reincarnation, that's why they wear the super fancy garments, the, the wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, that's how they roll. They wore the, 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 the expensive clothing. And they love the greetings of the people. Rabbi, Rabbi, Yahweh I told us about them. They make broad their phylacteries. They say, but they don't do. All right, so 
There you go. Remember, this path of truth is, is, is not supposed to be popular. It's not a it's not gonna be a popular thing. You know, the, the prophets of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, they weren't popular with the people. The prophets were hated, man. Yahweh Shai said, You shall be hated of all men for my namesake. So this is not a thing of popularity. If you think this is a thing of popularity, you, you don't understand this thing of ours. Now, will we get fame? Well, the scriptures say that. Eventually, the men of the Lord, Yahweh Shim Yahshai, will get fame, but that's not what this ministry is about. You know, popularity and being popular with the people and Oh, no. If you're telling the truth, 100% truth, you're not going to be popular. You're going to be hated. They're going to bring that up. When, when scholars, Christian scholars write books on uh, the subject of the Bible, they'll, they'll go into the, the root words. So here's the word for ignorant. That's right. Egno, let, let, let me let you hear it. The reason why you have to go through root words and all of that is because, remember, we're dealing with, when we deal with the Bible in the English, we're dealing with translations. It was translated from the original text, which were Hebrew and Greek, mostly Hebrew and Greek. Okay? Then you had Latin, you know? So there's a thing called lost in translation. So by the time the Bible went from Hebrew, Greek to so-called King's English, there were certain things that were lost in translation. And that's why we have to do a research. We have to research certain words, go back to the original tongue. What does it say in the original tongue, et cetera, et cetera. This, this is labor, man. This is labor, and scriptures speak about that, wherein we have labored. That's in the uh, Apocrypha, in the Prologue. You know, how they labored to, to give the correct translation. Okay? Strong's G50. Agnaeo. 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 Apostle Paul told Timothy, study to show thyself approved. The workman that, see, a workman, because so, this is work. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Part of rightly dividing the word of truth is looking up words. Get a, get a, a get the the true meaning of a word, which is etymology. So you can, when you when you give your divination of the scripture, you can accurately give the right div divination, the right interpretation. Because you looked up the word, you you researched the word. All right? This is all part of the ministry. It's all part of this work. Ag agno like agnostic. Like you, if you ask somebody, do they believe in God? Or are you atheist or do you believe in a God? And they'll say, I'm agnostic, meaning I'm in the middle. Ag agno, agno means to, to not know. Egna. Egno. Not know. So let me do this. Wait a minute. Alpha. First letter of Greek alphabet. The Messiah is Alpha uh, to indicate that he is the beginning and the end. Right, Alpha, Alpha. Let's see what this is. Right, so this word right here. Strong's G, 3539, Naeo. Naeo. Naeo is really to know. <coughs> <coughs> to 
perceive, which is to know, with the mind to understand, to have understanding, to think upon, heed, ponder, consider. Right to know, to understand. Mm. So the first word is uh, alpha to to. Um, here you got alpha right here. To it means first no, but egg egg no. Ignore it meaning to not to know. Oh, like ignorant. You ignore somebody. Oh, I know you. You know I don't know you. That means you. I. I not. I don't know you. Ignore. 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 Ignorant. See, that's from the Greek. Mm. Not to know. Unknown. That's why people say I'm. Ed See what happens when you look up words and you get into the etymology of words. Hey, it's a fascinating art, man. And not too many Israelites are into that. And that's why that's why their understanding suffers. Agnostic, meaning I don't, I'm questioning, I'm, I'm in the middle. <clears throat> Ignor ignorant. No, not. No, not. I'd rather get into that practice than get into these fruitless debates. I'd rather spend my time getting into the etymology of words you know, the, the, how words were constructed, you know, and what their true meanings are than in, engaging in some fruitless debate with a mindless moron. <laughs> Let's move on, man. <clears throat> fruitless debate with a mindless moron. So if a man moron, says he doesn't believe in a God, then you leave him alone. Yeah. How are you going to convince him unless you can ask the most how to come down and, and show himself? And then you can still say, I don't believe it. That's a, um, what do you call that? Project Blue, Blue Bean. Hey, these uh, atheists put him on a plane that's about to crash. They'll believe in God quick. <laughs> oh, hologram, you, you know. Um, or they can say they just don't know. They don't want to deal with it. So what did the Apostle Paul say? Come on back. But if any man be ignorant... Let him be ignorant. Yep, he doesn't know. In other words, if, if, if he doesn't know, leave him that way. He wants to be ignorant. He doesn't know. He don't want to know. Willingly, there's a scripture where it speaks about they are willingly ignorant. So if a guy wants to be willingly ignorant, you don't twist his arm trying to give him this knowledge of truth. You say, okay, well, that, that, you know, uh, you suffer the consequences of not knowing. All right, you suffer the consequences of being ignorant. That's on you. Okay, I, I got to go. I got moves to make. Then it says that all be let all things be done decently and all it. So if a guy says I don't agree with you and they're going back and forth, you don't got to go back and forth with him. Nope. That's why I said call the cops on vocab. Commit down. Remember the instructions, brothers. Commit thou unto faithful men which are able to teach others also. That's what the Apostle Paul told Timothy. And what he told Timothy was true back then and it's even more true now. It still stands. We are to commit this knowledge unto faithful men who are able to teach others also. That's what we should engage most of our time, if not all of our time in. Is this person able to have this, to learn this knowledge, this truth, and able to go out and teach it? Okay, that's what we should be mainly concerned about. Not trying to look flashy and trying to put on a flashy debate, trying to flaunt our intelligence and just how deep we are. And it's not about that, man. Because the Heavenly Father, if there's one thing he hates, is, is foolish pride. You know, the Heavenly Father can rip that knowledge from you, man. Then you end up being a bug out. 
So it's not about showing to the world just how smart you are and how intelligent you are in, in, this, in this ministry. As it is written, again, knowledge puffeth up. You see? No, we want to come before you, how about Shemiah Shah, in sincerity and honesty. Okay, so I'm going to end the video there. This is part one, and I'm going to come back. We stopped at what? We stopped at the 14th minute. 33rd second of this video put up by Apostle Thor. So I'll come back and do part two, continue from there, and hopefully it'll be edifying. Now, again, if you felt you were edified by this video, drop a line in the comment section. And for now, I say Shalom. I'll see you in the next one.